I was in a play, a production, and it came up in the dressing room, the topic of pro-life or pro-choice. And I was the only person in the room who was pro-life. And at that moment, I felt so scared because I didn't want anyone to be upset, but nobody else was on my side and I had no idea how to fight for it. I had a friend who ended up um, getting pregnant and I was the first person that uh, she told about her pregnancy. She didn't know what to do. Um, I didn't know what to do. I've always, always been pro-life, but when you're in the spot that you know that everything's about to change for your life, that it's gonna be a lot of hard work. It's kind of scary. To this moment, I still struggle and I still think about it. I can't believe that I'm about to be a mom. Everything's just about to change. We need to change the culture. And I think there's, there's really three ways to deal with that. First is education, and particularly for the young people. Second is dealing with women that are in crisis pregnancy situations and providing the care and support and the love that they need. And then also those women that um, make the decision to have an abortion to care for them after as well. The first interaction, it was very shocking. Um, I mean, I don't think that she ever expected that she was gonna get pregnant. We considered what was convenient for her um, how, how her parents would react, what her friends would say about her. We considered pretty much everything except for the life that was growing inside of her. I dealt with a lot of pain and a lot of guilt, a lot of regret. Even though it wasn't my child that wasn't growing physically inside of me, it felt like I was the one who had the abortion. It wasn't until um, a few years later that I realized I needed to use that experience to hopefully save other lives. I had the opportunity last year um, to become a counselor with the Catholic Pro-Life Committee. Um, I was a sidewalk counselor and I talked to a number of women who were walking into abortion facilities. I mean, to this day, I just feel it's a duty that I have. It's my responsibility to go out there and do what I can to um, educate the woman and the men about abortion so that they don't end up choosing that option. It's really kind of sad for me to say it, but I feel like if I hadn't gone to pro-life boot camp at public school, they might have swayed my views a bit. Now that I've been to boot camp, I've seen all of these people, I've been exposed to all this information. It was only three day, a three-day weekend, but it was like one of the most meaningful weekends that I've had. I believe it was the Saturday in boot camp that we all took a bus down to the Cemetery of Innocence. On the way there, it was, it was lots of fun. We were joking around with our friends. I don't think any of us really realized what we were about to do. As we stepped off the bus, it got really, really quiet. And we realized we're in a cemetery and like this has to be pretty serious. They handed me a red rose. It just looked like the most perfect, beautiful, untouchable flower. We stepped over to the one headstone for these thousands of unborn children who were buried there. It made me sort of sad because not everyone got to be recognized, and that's still a human life that deserves recognition. When it was time to leave the cemetery, we all went up and we placed our flower in these vases. And it was really hard for me to let that flower go because I just felt like that was one child who I could have given recognition for a life. But there were thousands more who would never get that. That one memory really sticks out to me because it's always going to be something in the back of my mind as a reminder to keep fighting. Alma is one of our Gabriel mothers. When she first came to us, she was very much determined of having an abortion, and she was very scared. She asked me what was going on, you know, what was behind my story. How can they help me to be in a better place in this um, pregnancy?
I needed someone to listen to me, to what I was what I was going through. For them to come in my life, it's like something that I needed. It gave me hope that I wasn't alone in this journey, so that kind of was the sign that I was looking for. Well, I got to hear, I got to hear the heartbeat of my, my baby, so that was kind of emotional for me to just hear a little human person inside of me. I'm looking forward to see my child born. I'm excited. I'm excited to have my little girl with me. Yeah, I think we do. We have the name already. Kalina. It means flower because she's the flower that is growing inside of me so 